Chapter 5, Mishnah 1. The fifth chapter of the tractate continues the discussion began in the previous chapter about what is included in the, in the standard sale of various types of properties. This chapter deals mainly with the sale of movable properties. The Mishnah discusses what is included in the standard sale of a ship. If someone sells a ship, he has sold not only the ship itself, i.e. its hull, but he has also sold the mast, the sails, and the anchor. He has also sold all the things that move the ship or assist in its steering. All of these are considered part of the ship, and they are therefore included in the sale. But he has not sold the slaves that were used by the seller as the ship's crew, nor has he sold the sacks that held the cargo. And certainly he has not sold the cargo itself. Even though these things are kept in the ship and used with it, they are not part of the ship. They are therefore not included in the sale. However, if the sailor, seller said to the buyer, I am selling you this ship and everything that is inside it, then all of these are sold as well, for this extra clause includes whatever is normally kept on a ship. The second part of the Mishnah discusses the sale of a wagon and the sale of animals that pull wagons. Someone who sold a wagon has sold only the wagon itself, but he has not sold the pair of mules that pull it, provided that they are not attached to the wagon at the time of the sale. If they are attached at the time of the sale, however, then they are included in the sale. But if he sold the pair of mules, he has not sold the wagon with them, even if they are attached to the wagon at the time of sale. Since mules can be used for riding even without a wagon, the wagon is not included with the sale of the animals unless it is specifically mentioned. The Mishnah discusses other laws that apply to the sale of beasts of burden. If someone sold a yoke, a bar that is used to attach a team of oxen in a row, so they can work together to plow a field. He has not sold the team of oxen that use it, and if he sold the team of oxen, he has not sold the yoke that joins them. The Mishnah cites a dispute as to whether the rule that one who sells the yoke has not sold the oxen is always true. Rabbi Huda says, the price tells us what is included in the sale. How so? If the buyer said to him, sell me your yoke for 200 zoos, he could not have meant to buy only the yoke, because everyone knows that a yoke is not sold for 200 zoos. In such a case, Rabbi Yehuda holds that the oxen would be included. But, the sages say, the pricing is not a proof. Sometimes a person will deliberate, deliberately overpay for something because he wants to give the buyer a gift. Therefore, even in such a case, the sale of the yoke does not include the oxen.